here representing Lead the Way Learning Academy in the advanced program um, that's facilitated by the County Department of Family Services and Workforce Development Board of Central Ohio. So AMP stands for Achieve More and Prosper. And um, we also are working to have this um, be a two-part series that is on radical self-love in conjunction with Adam H, which is the alcohol, mental health, and other drug um, health sector for Franklin County. And so everything's been a little um, challenged, I think, by our current pandemic, but we are grateful that Adam H is still working through those challenges, hopes that they can partner with us for a part two. Um, we're excited to be here today to talk about radical self-love. Again, if you can bring your attention over to the chat, if you can introduce yourself, your name, your pronouns, and then what's a word of reflection um, after hearing radical self-love? What does that mean to you? Um, I would like to just open it up by having each one of our panelists introduce themselves. And I will do my best to go in alphabetical order if I am that on my feet right now. And so with that being said, I think I'm gonna have Miss Deja introduce herself, um, the entity that she's representing, and then her first word response to hearing radical self-love. Hello, you all, and thank you so much for having me on this Wellness Wednesday. Um, Tiandra, so good to hear from you and see you in earnest. Um, thank you all for um, inviting me into this um, community. Um, so I'm Deja Redman, and who am I today? There's been so many changes in my life. Um, I think I'm not what I do, but um, who I am today is I'm reflecting on a lot of things lately. Um, and what I do with my heart's work is I, I'm co-founder of Replenish and the Yoga Carriage. We are um, a grassroots uh, self-care mission. We do yoga and spa experiences. We are a social enterprise, we like to call ourselves. And we're here to awaken the community to live a more connected and beautiful everyday life. Um, and so we provide a space that um, is a perfect space to kind of just be yourself. You walk in the door and you can be yourself. And with that being said, you can take care of yourself by um, doing yoga and um, providing services that um, restore, restore your mind and body as well. So my pronouns are she and her. Um, let's see. Radical self-love. I've been thinking about this, the word radical and what that really, really means. And then love. They're both really powerful words. Um, I think today um, radical self-love for me means understanding is the word that I can think of. Thank you for having me today. Thank you, Ms. Deja. Um, the great Duar, if you would like to introduce yourself, you'd be so pleased. Wow. Okay. Um, <clears throat> my name is Richard Dewart Brown. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so uh, what I've, art was a way I've communicated or understood how to make sense out of life. And so uh, I'm, a, I'm an artist at various places like Transit Arts and, um, and a few high schools and w whatever opportunity unfolds. And mostly I use art as a way to connect to uh, your inner me, the me inside of you. And most of us don't listen to the me, they listen to everybody else that blocks the me. And I think that um, I'm just spending my whole life learning to trust the me that was always, already given to me. And I've, I've come to say it that way because um, I've understood that uh, we all have a voice that we somehow, is, somehow gets lost in school, it gets lost through teachers, it gets lost through circumstances, it gets lost through our, even our family relationships. And um, sometimes people's wills are imposed upon us. And so we're fighting through all that. And then, then in light of this pandemic, a lot of kids are, um, you know, fending for themselves in ways they didn't have to fend for themselves in another kind of way. So, it's, so my heart's uh, cry is um, connecting with some of the students or kids that are just like somewhat disconnected in a sense of uh, they will never ask for help because they don't know how to. And um, so it's just like I'm on the lookout for those kind of things. And so in reality, you don't share a lot. Of, you can't um, openly say this kid needed that and this person needed that and you did this because it's kind of like something you do between them and it's it's a protection. So some cases I can't always say what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Does that make any sense? <laughs> yeah, what I heard you say 
is that in your work, you use art as a sense of a line of communication and that young people will communicate to you through their art without speaking what's going on. But it'll be reflected in what they create. Yeah. And, and what they don't create. Some of them, the relationships develop from that. So um, <laughs> that's, that's where my focus is. And I evaluate more and more as I get to meet so many people. And um, what, what else do I need to say? Uh, you what me? you did, your pronouns, and your... Um, he, and him. he and him. And then... <laughs> say what else? And it was your one word response to radical self-love. Uh, stillness. It would be stillness. And stillness. Deja, was it understanding or was it understanding? Uh oh, she's needed. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I'm going to work the Zoom. Understanding, so I N N E R. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Stillness is a beautiful word as well. Yeah. We're going to make a beautiful art collage with all these words that we're going to come up with. Okay. Element OP. L M. Okay. So that means that Maria Cruz, you're up next. We're going in alphabetical order. So if you can introduce yourself, um, your pronouns, and then your response, your one word response to radical self-love. Okay. My name is Maria Cruz. I am a licensed esthetician and the owner of True Glam. It's a beauty studio where we do all things skin and, um, spray tanning and lashes and a, a variety of different things. Um, I am um, a mother and a business owner. So I'm a mompreneur. That's how I <laughs> like to identify myself when it comes to those things. Um, I, my pronouns are she and her. And I would say when it comes to radical self-love, um, accountability. Accountability would probably be how I most define that. And so, hey, hey, hey. Sorry, I'm painting. I'm working at the same time because um, people will not let me rest. Um, and I'm trying not to snap because they have a whole lot of time now during the pandemic and their patience is not um, there, but they're going to get there because I'm somebody's mom and grandma and I'm going to have to pull my hat out. So I am Nikki Burton. I am representing Kings by Nikki Wearable Art, LLC. Um, I do a lot of things with paint. Um, I would say I'm a surface designer. Um, I paint on wearables, floors, doors, walls, canvases. Um, I probably paint on your body if you still long enough. Um, my pronouns are she um, and her, and uh, my word would be bravery. Hey, all right. Thank you for those introductions. And so just to begin to set the scene, because we have a little uh, fuller room, room than what we started with. Um, so this is our, hopefully our first installation of a two-part series on, on radical self-love. And just to unpack that, um, that term, I heard more about the term than I was even aware of over the weekend. I don't know how many people, so in the participants um, button, there is a green yes or a red no. If you haven't tried that out on Zoom, it's Right there. So I'm going to ask a question. How many people in this space had the opportunity to hear from either Madam Angela Davis and Nikki Giovanni and or Jill Scott and Erica Badu this weekend? Anybody? Green checks? Light up the comments? Even just get a little excited so I can see your face? I did want to say that. I'm grateful that I get to see everybody's face today, or a lot of people's faces today. So if you're not showing your face, by all means, we would love to see your beautiful face. Um, I think that this is a beautiful conversation to have um, and be present. 
um, for whatever that means for us. So if we can't see your face, you're here in spirit. But if we do see it, it's very nice to see it today. Um, so see a couple people, a few people got to experience it. I know that some video is circulating, but Angela Davis and Nikki Giovanni had a conversation that was hosted by Girl Trek on Friday. And I was still working at like 7.02 and I started to have a full on conniption. And those of you who know me know that that's really real. I'm still growing. Um, but I'm so glad that I got to listen to that conversation. It was beautiful. And they actually mentioned uh, one of my favorite quotes. So I'm going to read it to you. And I've heard this quote stated a few different ways. Um, but I'm going to read it to you. And then anybody who can tell me who the author is, uh, the first one in the comments and the first one to share the mic and, and speak, it would be great. But it says, caring for myself is not self-indulgence. It is self-preservation. And that is an act of political warfare. And this quote is also um, the same author, the first person that's credited to terming radical self-love. Lauren, I see your mind working. I see your, I knew you were gonna be one of the first people. I'm gonna say it one more time. Caring for myself is not self-indulgence. It is self-preservation, and that is an act of political warfare. Anything? I'm not going. I'm not going to spill it because I see Lauren working. I can tell. Her, she be going fast, y'all, and she she probably knows it right on the tip of her tongue. Um, but with that, that's kind of going to set the stage for what this conversation is. There's a difference between self care, self love, and radical self love, and why um, for any moment, but at such a time as this, why it's so important for us to turn inward. And so this conversation is bringing like you see a number of different individuals from various industries that I would say take part in the self-love of the community, right? Their services provide space for those people to partake in self-love and to practice self-love and radical self-love. And in doing so, there is, I'm sure, um, a level of self-love that they have to practice themselves. And so this conversation is going to be focused around that. And so, um, the first question that I want to ask is, if we don't get an answer, Lauren, are you going to answer me? I saw you working. Or are you Googling? I don't know it. I was thinking of it, but I don't. That's OK. You probably do. Audre Lord is the author, OK? So from our panelists, I'm curious. What is that relationship between the service that you provide, um, the industry that you work in? Um, a lot of you said different things. Uh, Deja, I believe she said it was her heart's work. So it's not that she's necessarily labeled by her work that she does, but what is it about the space that you create or the service that you provide that is available for others to um, add self-love? I think for me, um, I came from a very type A personality kind of a space, and it was a, a giving space all the time, just give, 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 and it took a lot to um, realize that I could no longer pour from an empty cup, so recognizing kind of that um, that cyclical movement between client and and myself and how we can pour into each other and and how that can fulfill me at the end of the day through showing them what they deserve and then also understanding that side of it for me as a person understanding what i deserve being able to um offer that education but still kind of help them experience it all at the same moment does that make sense where i understood it for myself and it was something that was beneficial to me so I wanted to help push that out into the world as well thank you anyone want to build off that or share your experience uh, thank you Maria um, so I'll pick you back off of Maria um, I think for me it's twofold because we're a family-owned business so it's like the 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 lineage of women uh, it's my sister 
and mom and I um, co-founded it together. Um, but I'll speak from my personal experience because we each have a path that kind of came together. Mine was sort of generated out of fear, you know, fear of, um, you know, being accepted or not accepted, fear of, um, well, will I ever be fully confident in my life? Um, and then it came also from a place of, I believe that everyone, beauty is the birthright for everyone. Like no baby, every baby born is beautiful. You know, and we really, you know, peel back the layers. And when you think about a birth of a baby itself, it's like, that's so beautiful. So why do we forget that along the way? And I just struggled in that space for so long. So, you know, I had to face my fear too in going into this industry and being different. You know, it, yes, we're doing superficial, you know, things supposedly, but superficial is a part of it too, right? Like this idea that you can create what you desire um, outside of yourself as well as inside. So I came from a place of, exterior because i was searching i think we're taught in life to search so far outside of ourselves that um we sort of lose ourselves in that process um and so um, i searched outside of myself and i think that the beauty business you know touched my heart also because i love to express myself through what i wear you know through how i feel for the day like what color lipstick am i going to wear and i think for women i could just speak on behalf of being a woman is you know, you know, that freedom of expression is really important to me. And I think that when you have that common purpose, that purpose, um, and you create a mission off of that, um, that is the driving force that attracts the energy to the space. So um, I, we, we at Replenish attracted people who were tired and sick of like the traditional uh, way of thinking about what beauty means. When you come from a place of beauty is your birthright, it changes your per perception a bit. And so now we're able to experience the totality of what beauty is endless, right? And so we're able to start with uh, one of the things that we say at Replenish is beauty starts with a healthy conversation. And just like this panel today, this conversation is we're not necessarily seeking a, a result. We're seeking to examine and to explore together. Um, so, yeah, I think that it's been a really um, intuitive flow. I, we had a business plan. Um, but I think that we stay tried and true to our heart space, which is the mission of like, everyone deserves love. Um, and we started with something that is familiar. And then we started implementing small changes to, to help to shift the paradigm of um, the fixations that we have on our exteriors and, and basing our value off of what, the, what society has conditioned us to think, if that makes, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it does. There's a lot of themes, right? And so what you are sharing where, you know, we, we sometimes we get into the space where we're searching outside of ourselves for work, and then it ties directly into what Duarte was sharing before with the me that he says gets so minimized through every different, like, system that we're in. And even, like, with school, we spend a majority of our time in school after, what, five? If, it, if we wait that long? And then it starts to kind of create this surface barrier almost um, that kind of shields off who our inner, our inner self is. And so um, that's great. I didn't know if anybody wanted to respond to that. And by, by all means, if something comes to you at some point that's for a response to a question prior, please speak up. And then as always, everyone has the opportunity to um, add a question in the chat. And then there will also be an opportunity for um, different people to take the mic and ask a question if they'd like. We have a little more time to, to move around. Um, we've had Maria on before, and she shared with us what her path is. And, um, David, you spoke about your path a little bit. Um, but Miss Nikki, I think I've heard of yours in a prior conversation. So I'm curious how you got to this space where you are, your LLC, and you're creating your wearable art. Um, that kind of carries your mission, but can you share a little bit about how you arrived to the space that you're in now? Um, I mean, would I'd ha I have to be? Um, I've had jobs, um, and I am a teacher. Um, is I I'm now teaching in a different way. Um, so I'm still teaching, but it's through paint and um, 
emotion. So um, during like the paint parties that people will, you know, ask me to host or come to, it ends up turning into ministry sometimes, um, especially when it comes to the theme of we're going to do self-portraits. Um, there are a lot of people out here that don't like themselves. And they will, you know, I love myself to death on, you know, social media or all of these other different types of ways. But when it comes down to really a blank canvas and looking at themselves, they're like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to paint me. And I'm like, why? What's wrong with you? What, what is it that you don't like about yourself that you don't want to see on a canvas? Like, you look at yourself every day in a mirror. Like, are you not really looking at yourself in the mirror? Or are you just going through the motions of, I got to get up, I got to get dressed, I got to go to work. I'm going to just do this and put on this facade or this um, shell of, I am this, I am that. You know, I tell people on my bummiest day, I'm still the bomb. I just felt like being a bum today. That doesn't change the fact that I'm still the bomb.com. You, you might see me and be like, oh, what she got on today? Or, you know, some people see me and they're like, why well, you have on all gray today? You're not feeling yourself. Some days I might dress how I feel and I might have a gray day. And that's what I felt like wearing. Some days I just, I like gray. Anybody ask me to paint on a t-shirt, the first color I'm going to give you is you want a gray t-shirt? <laughs> because po color pops on gray. Um, and I found that out over the years. Um, but I, I literally just want people to be proud to be themselves, whatever that means to them. Just be proud to be you, be, just be dope. Just go out here and be dope and do dope ish. Do what you're supposed to do in the world in the world would be a better place. That's it. That's all I got. Thank you. And Dwight, you mentioned that you have always done art, but if you can share, I'm not sure that that is the whole story. Your journey to where you've arrived today, has it always been art? How did that start for you? Um, and if not, what kind of took so, 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 so it's been a, well, so it's always a long journey for everyone, but for me, um, my initial grapplings with painting and making art was um, the idea when my mom brought a boyfriend home, I learned how to trace with tracing paper and to get him to approve me, I drew a picture of a girl, traced it, drew it and went out and showed him real quick. Then I kept doing it because they said something good about me. I was seeking approval, you know, because, you know, um, you know, born without a father, mom had boyfriends and girlfriends. And you raise in a situation where your affirmation is not, you had to find it yourself. So I started fending for myself from the beginning. So, and then I became caregiver. So with that, um, self-care was something that I had no time for or even knowledge of. So um, it was about taking care of my little brothers and sisters or when my mom came home from a cabaret, she was waking us up saying, I'll meet your, you know, blank butts and, you know, clean this house up, you know, so it didn't, I didn't have a sense of childhood. So when I went to school, I went to school like seeking answers. And I, our fifth grade teacher, Mr. Steele, was the first man I encountered. And I think that they said I was a shy kid. It wasn't that I was a shy kid. It was that I was waiting for answers. But everything always resolved around to when I began to paint. It was like, personally, as old as I am now, I'll just be real transparent. It was like, that's when God surrounded me and talked to me. But I didn't know it was God. And I know he put people in my life, like teachers and other people, that gave me what they wasn't giving me at home and what we didn't have from our relatives. So um, all along, my dream was to build a teenage museum where kids can come without cost, without judgment, without lacking, and be treated just like family. So it's always me building family and building stories. Well, when you talk about Nikki Giovanni, uh, I, I stopped going to Mohawk School, which was Afrocentric now, but... In the ninth grade, they laughed at a teacher with no toes. And the, the kids here in Ohio were like, just like kids in New Jersey, just shrewd, you know? And so I walked there and um, watched how they disrespected the teacher. And because I loved art, just 
I was naive in the sense I was buried in my world. I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have cool. I didn't have etiquette. I didn't have social intelligence in the sense of being integrated, raised the right way. Since I hooked at school, I didn't go to school because mom wasn't taking us to school. She didn't, we didn't have the nurture in life. And um, not to blame my mom, I understand that whatever case, whatever caused that and, you know, caused those things, you know, Miles' mom and that was my situation and like many other people's situation. So somewhere in my line, in my mind, when I made art, it, uh, it, 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 became, it made sense to me. So when people saw me draw or paint or something, they just assumed right, right off that I had a mother and a father and a, and a, and a life that everybody else had because I, just, I learned how to like, I learned how to navigate so I didn't really get in fights. I, I was I, I was invisible. I was like, um, you know, um, uh, you know, at, like trying to find a way. So I, I I don't I wouldn't say I fantasize. I always look for hope. And my my nephew Malik used to tell me that I was a I live in a fantasy world. Well, I think he did too because I we, I think we all did. We lived in a world where we was trying to we were trying to attach ourselves to some kind of sense of balance and some sense of uh, um, you know it was a sense of what we're calling you know, um, self-care, it was, we were trying to care for ourselves naturally and instinctively and intuitively. So um, it wound up in Ohio, I wound up, um, you know, um, going to CCAD. I quit high school and went, went to CCAD and I got transcripts from 77 because I was just focused on doing what I was doing. My dream was to get rich, buy happiness and fix our family. I don't know who my mom was going to marry, even though she had women relationships with women. So I'm just trying to tell you idealistically, um, we are, we're all given these um, boundaries and, and these, these things that are unclear um, to find some kind of order. And so realistically, I find myself in the same position as my fifth grade teacher, hidden in a kind of way in, in a place where you serve people and you're building these relationships that, don't, that don't, they're not aware are being built. I come to find out years later that Mr. Steele was raised by his grandma and he looked out for me. The reason why I felt like he treated him like his son, because he did. But he did it in a way where he treated everyone in the class like a son. So actually, I'm just transferring what I received from a, from an adult. And so like, um, and some things you give away without a, without words or descriptions because it's intuitive. You know, you don't, a parent doesn't ask for permission. A parent takes permission. So that's been my guide. And and Nika Giovanni was did a thing about a a, a woman, and she said, um, if trees could talk. I wonder what they say. I met an old man and she began to describe details of a prostitute and of life or how it was being black or she, she used it, if trees could talk. So the talking trees have become my um, manifesto where I take a person that is ignored or forgotten or not important, take a picture, do a drawing. Maybe they'll get a, the original drawing. They write me a story. Well, then I put the story with the picture or a copy of it and becomes this box that opens from a cigar box and it unfolds a life that is valuable to me. And so in my way, um, I, I build family from everybody I interact with. If I painted your picture, you become part of my family. And so I, if we're not in the canon, I made my own canon and I didn't, I don't have to wait for a canon from, you know, the mainstream to validate, be validated or feel like, um, you know, I need to see myself in your encyclopedia to know that I'm valuable or they need to see themselves, which we, we do know that, I'm sorry, so you, you opened up a whole rabbit trail and I'm just going on and on. And I think I probably need to stop now, but, but basically I'm just saying that's, that's kind of my journey. And, and where it leads me to now is doing these, what I call talking trees. Uh oh, it looks like Keandra might've stepped away for just a quick second. Um, we wanted to give everyone a chance, if you had any questions, uh, also to acknowledge the chat. Um, it looks like there's been a, a lot of really good um, appreciation for some of the things that have been said. So thank you for everyone so far. Thank you. Can you hear me? We can. Okay, great. Thank you. I was trying to switch between modes there, but no. I think hopefully I heard everything that Duart was saying because right before my computer decided to crash, he was saying, I hope that I end it with Canon. That's what I heard the last part of. Um, and that everyone that he creates art of is a part of his family. So, and I feel like I'm a part of Duart's family just from the very first time that I met him a couple years ago. So it's a beautiful thing. 
Um, I want to um, I want to show y'all. So my birthday was last month, and so when he was saying that he surprised me, um, he and my husband surprised me with a um, portrait of me and my kids. I don't know if y'all can see that. Whoa! Yes. How beautiful! So, he asked me my favorite color. Like, I have leopard print on there. Like, my coloring book is on there. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I'm, I, I was in tears. I was trying to keep my face because, you know, you pay to get your face done at your party to be, you know, <laughs> you don't want uh, makeup stains, you know, tear stains running down your foundation. <laughs> But yes, I was uh, I was grateful. I was like, man, like now I know why he was asking me all them questions when we were visiting <laughs> together. <laughs> wow, that's absolutely beautiful. Um, there, there was something that you said, Dewar, that like I haven't heard before, and it just it makes so much sense. But it was the first time that I heard it articulated um, as such. And that was that self-care is different from trying to care for yourself. And I, did, it, did that stick out to anybody else or was it just me? So you were explaining, because I mean, because I don't know how many people can relate to it, but I, I just did for a moment that in our act of trying to care for ourselves, whether that be a child trying to care for ourselves in, um, I'm not gonna say in absence of our parents, although that may be the case, but sometimes like in conjunction with our parents, because what we're told as a parent role is a little different than what we might be experiencing, although we find out the parent roles are so, um, it's such a, a broad spectrum. But that whole notion of self-care versus caring for oneself and I didn't know if anyone else had um anything that they wanted to say in response to that uh, from the panel or from the audience or if there was anything else that's been shared at this point that kind of want to highlight notice I have my picture up <laughs> my background No? Okay, so there's another question that um, I have, and that's how many of you have clients that come to you that know that they're on this journey to self-care or self-love or self-actualization versus um, someone who discovers that when they're maybe in your chair or on the other end of your service in your classroom, like Miss Nikki said? So that experience and that, like, with your clients that you work with, how many of them are coming to you knowing that they're on this journey? Like, I'm doing this for self-care. Because that, that started to be more trendy recently. We started to say it. And so how many people come to your chair knowing that? And then how many kind of discover it? I, 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 could, I could say something to how it works for me is um, the way it started was uh, back at Shortstop, it's a youth center that is in the short north and um at the time when i was going there as an artist the kids that came would get a ride and we weren't allowed to give rides home but i've always broken all the rules all the time in that sense and what the ride was was a ride up down campus a hamburger in the store and uh, from you know a restaurant and on the way home we would talk and and sometimes i would say things like anger is your enemy because while you're angry you can't strategize. And so when you can't strategize, you, you, you wear yourself out trying to fight because you're not thinking in, in a strategic way to kids that really don't seem to listen. But um, those, 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 those times became the times when on the ride home is when people got, they know that they'll get a hamburger. So they, that's when people start talking about serious, what well, the kids start talking about serious stuff. Well, now, it, it, since I've been given this chance to go into school, some kids will watch you for like a whole year. Then the second year they'll come in because they come you into the art room from their other classes. Then they'll sit by your desk and won't go nowhere else or they'll literally cuss the teacher out and won't talk to them or some scenario of questions. Well, I don't really act alarmist because it's the art room 
not because it's the art room, because it's a chance just to like not criticize a lot. Just, just, just listen. Well, one kid, they start, all of a sudden they start talking to you, telling things like, I can't get a job or my mom made me say happy birthday to my dad and he's not taking care of me or they start saying things. And realistically, I'm not there as a social worker or a counselor or a licensed anyone. I'm a visual artist who comes in, makes art, and I've become like a grandfather who knows how to listen. And in that case, um, I can give, give those kind of things to people, like relation, relational talks. And so what happens, this one particular kid I thought, think about, uh, he couldn't get a job. He's a senior now. And, um, you know, he, you know, he's got his, you know, he's got adult experiences, but he's still a, 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 a one who needs self-care in the sense of affirmation, of guidance, of parental, parental, you know, you know, infusions. So this particular kid and not saying any names, you know, um, they're all graduated from school this year. We did a special project where we painted these banners of them and they're kind of up. And I think he was in a class that wasn't going to graduate, but I told him, let's paint all the kids. If they're a senior, they're still a senior, whether they're finished or not. So let's do it as a prophetic prayer. And then when you paint them, you know, you call them out to who they are instead of like talking about them. So this particular kid writes me on Instagram and made friends with me yesterday. And he says, he said, you know, of course, you got to say what up and talk a certain way. And so I'll just say, what's up, my little ninja? I'll say ninja because it's just like a little bit like edgy. It gives him a chance to be feel a little open. He said, I'm a grown man now. I can say what I want. I can say the real word. But meanwhile, I said, so how you going? And he said, he said what's up? And then it's this long process of back and forth on Instagram message. Then he finally goes, um, it's been rough. My mom's in Ghana. She's been there since March. And like, uh, he's, then, he's, then he, he didn't say rough until it got to the, the last sentence. Then he says, you know, it's been rough. And I said, I love you, man. And then he, he writes back and he writes the right, same response back. But realistically, he's just looking for that, that bit of care that comes that way. There's been other things that, that uh, trail this relationship. But, but because of that, when I'm around him or go to school and he comes in the lunchroom, you see 700 kids and he comes up to me and gives me a hug in front of all of his cool friends. They look at me like, how, how, how is he friends with me? Because I'm just this old man in the art room making art. And this kid that's kind of, you know, bullish, you know, dominant, uh, loud, or, you know, uh, uncontrollable is show me this kind of respect. And I believe that's how he seeks his self-care, not just him. Many of them seek their self-care by coming to you, telling you how they're going to F somebody up, how they're going to do this and that. And if you could just sit there and say some things like, so after you do that, then what? And look at them. They look at you like, you know, because the first thing we usually initially do when they're looking for self-care is say, why do you want to do that? And we jump on people and tell them what they shouldn't do. Well, I say not people, but kids that have been told the same thing over and over from grade one to the 12th that are still doing the same things when we question them, why do you do them? Instead of saying, so what are you going to do next? And somehow they, you know that that's their behavior. I don't know how to explain what I'm saying to you, but a little bit of wisdom comes to you after time. And what I'm saying is for me, this self-care thing works from a place of um, intuition and, and recognize, recognizing that people that come at you may come at you with a certain kind of attitude, but it's not necessarily, um, it's like you gotta be able to look that they're, they're craving for self-care. Do, do you hear me? I mean, that, to me, that's like, but you gotta know it. You don't, and you don't have to ever say it to him, but realistically, he's, he's, first he's looking for a relationship, say he loves you. And then secondly, um, when he tried to simply get a job, uh, I lost, I, lost um, I forgot that I was in the classroom and I told him, did you fill out for the application? He said, they didn't call me back. I said, did you go back? And before you know it, I was kind of like yelling at him. Then I said, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot we are in school. Then he looked at me and said, that's okay, because he felt like my forgetting that I was in a professional environment and talking like he was really my son gave him the, the affirmation that I think that I was, I think that I've been get, able to give away what I always longed my whole life. And so I think that in that comes this, this sense of self-care because you care for who's there. And I think it's a natural thing to self-care as well as a trained experience, but I believe I think that what I've learned from this, that I, and I know it makes some sense intuitively, but it may not fit um, the style that we're taught to teach, but they are going into the, the mode of um, emotional, social emotional learning as a necessity for knowing how to meet the needs of these kids that are filled with all kinds, especially with this in light of kids not being able to walk a stage and graduate, they're gonna carry this with, with another kind of fear that's embedded in, in what's gonna happen next. So. I think that um, there's this intuition not to not to overreact, or not to not to take everything as as a, as a as something against you, and be able to have this resilience, to like and that self care comes from just being still, 
and being able to like be intuitive and, and react, not react, but strategize. <laughs> I'm sorry for being so long winded. <laughs> no, thank you. Like you said, it, it's, it's a wisdom. Um, Deja, did you have something that you wanted to add? I don't want to. Yeah, uh, thank you for sharing, um, Dwight. And am I saying your name correctly? Yeah, you're right. It's, okay. It's just your like artwork, it. first of all, is phenomenal. Um, thank you. Literally, I was like, I want to see more. Like, that is so beautiful. <laughs> uh, thank you for sharing your heart's work with us. Um, yeah, through your conversation and your share, um, what I gather is that you pay attention to people, you know, oh, yeah. and wow. for me, that's care, right? And I think that when we talk about self-care is an action of love. Um, and so when we, when we pay attention to ourselves um, and each other, right? So if we're not paying attention to ourselves, how can we fully pay attention to one another? Because someone could be talking, but if you you, you stand in there, you, know, you may be listening or not listening. So paying attention to the root of what you're doing in any, any moment is really important. Um, yeah, and I think like for me, care is definitely paying attention, you know, paying attention. And there's no like specific roadmap, I think truth is a pathless land for care. Um, I think that there are some really great, you know, things that we can share amongst each other to, to fill the pot of care. Um, I think it's also really interesting when we um, engage all of the senses too. I think for, for me and uh, creating Replenish, people come to us and sometimes they know why exactly and sometimes they are just led to coming. They don't even know why or someone told them they should come. And instead of like um, telling them who we are, we show them by setting the stage of you know, the space, the hospitality, the words that we choose the images that you'll see is not like fixed images of any one person on the wall you see family pictures and so i think that that intuition right um uh, we we used our intuition to create the space um exactly how we see fit that goes right along with the belief that beauty is our birthright so you know i believe that things should you know should should flow um so when people come in i realize that they may not know logically but something brought them here. And so when they're in our space, we try to pay attention. So even if you're in the room for 15 minutes getting a brow wax, um, you know, we start with the power of breath, you know? So if we can just take this time right now, just as a panel and as a people to just sit and just, just allow our shoulders to be drawn down from our ears and just really paying attention to our breath in this moment things begin to shift a bit. Amen. Well, yes. So look to be at present. Your whole, self, your whole self versus just a part. Um, identifying when you're attaching to a thought so much that you're losing the other aspects of yourself, right? Because then we'll, we'll be more uh, powerful in the choice, choices that we have to make on a daily when, we know, when you know your own capacity when you know that you're in a space of anger, you may not choose to gather today. You may choose to paint or play the drums. And so it's identifying, you know, and nurturing your emotions and not knocking them away because they're deemed bad or good. It's an experience and a sensation that we're having in the body. And I think that when we start paying attention to ourselves in the stillness that you shared, right? And that's still, then that's what stillness is because we realize that the environment and the sounds around us may be quiet right now, but when we close off our eyes or even just keep a, keep a soft opening eye, we begin to shift inward and realize that there's a lot of things going on inside of us at one given time. We're multidimensional humans. And so I think ultimate care is really giving yourself time and space to be able to focus in, period. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because to notice your breath is to be present, right? Because it's the, the most present that you can be to actually feel yourself inhale and exhale. So um, great, grateful for that. Um, actually, once this brings us to another question. And Miss um, Nikki actually mentioned when she was doing her uh, introduction she said people will not let me rest but they're gonna let me rest because i am this and i am that first right and so um one of the questions in the chat asked how what does self-care look for you at this time 
And the, the bigger question is how do you make yourself there so that when others come to you and come to receive from you, um, that you can kind of make sure that you're in that space? Um, I would say even coming from like, I've been in the same mental space that Nikki has talked about where it's like, people won't let me rest. I came to the understanding that um, speaking the truth in love is like the best thing that I can do for myself and others. Being able to say, you know, I'm tired. I'm not your best bet. I can't give you all of me right now. I have to take time for myself. And in telling you this, I'm allowing you to go find what you do need. I'm not giving you a partial point just to say that I did so that we um, aren't reducing what, you're, what you need and taking away from what I don't have in the first place. So self-care for me is being able to say no, being able to, um, to even draw myself away. Sometimes even like in this quarantine space, I have to find time away from the rest of the family with us all being together all at one time and having my moment to recharge. I recharge in my, sil my silence and in my, um, my solo space. So um, being able to affirm to other people that it's not because I don't want to, or it is because I don't want to, whatever it is, the fact of the matter is the truth and love is the best way to um, maintain your boundaries, which is self-respect, which is also a form of self-care. Um, it's a way to help others be able to lean on themselves and understand what they're capable of. But it's also a way to um, help or assist in allowing them to um, learn your, 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 what your interaction needs to look like. So that moving forward, no one feels taken advantage of. You guys are kind of learning that ebb and flow between the two of you. So I would just suggest to Nikki, tell these people to sit down. <laughs> Well, so here's the thing. Um, because I have been going tough mm -hmm. since the since the first week. So since after the first week, I've been giving. Like, you know, I started doing things to supplement my income. Um, and so then they've kind of taken off. But... Um, you know, then I had time to, if someone orders something like, oh yeah, you can get it tomorrow. But now I'm at a space where, nah, you can't get it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I need you to understand that. Um, and so now people are just like, I don't know if they feel like they can just keep tugging and pulling, tugging and pulling. And I'm like, yeah, no, like after a certain time, I just don't even respond to messages. And I tell them like, I like you, I still want to be able to go to bed and go to sleep and not have mm -hmm. to you blow my, my phone up because of something that you need. Not right now, but it can also wait. Um, and I, I had to take a step back. So um, it was um, like two Fridays ago, I decided that I wasn't going to do a virtual paint party because I needed me that day. Like I'm, I'm not doing it. And I just told people like, I need me today. Like I need to give back to myself because I don't have anything else to give y'all at this mm -hmm. point. And so without that, you, you won't get anything for a long period of time. So I did, I took that weekend and I recharged and um, I'm back, but now I see that I'm going to need that time again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now going forward, I am going to schedule like one day, um a week where i'm not doing anything in reference to my business i just i need time for me and i, I need, need time to today. yes i need me today oh yep so i have those uh i need me days scheduled on my calendar now <laughs> good <laughs> For me, during this, uh, when the pandemic began that first week, um, it was traumatic. Um, yes. Owning a, mm. owning a business with uh, and being responsible for more than 25 people and 
I was conditioned in my mind to be a workaholic. Like I live and breathe replenish and we've been in business for 10 years. So it was almost like a, a fast, like abrupt, like somebody just cut something off, you know? And I'm like, Whoa, like, and I had no control over it. So this was the, this, the, the, the biggest teacher for me, because it's like, I preach, you know, understand yourself. You have all these emotions, lean in all the, so it's like, as soon as it hit, it was like, my ego was the wanting to be like, I got to work. I got to do, I got to. And then all of a sudden my heart space just came through like, no, you need to sit, ma'am. You need to sit down and you need to collect the data because there's, there was so much going on and the, the information was changing week by week that, you know, I just called my sister and was like, I know that they're, you know, everybody's still open, but like, we gotta, we gotta trust our intuition here, our, our gut instinct and make the call because I feel like we're fighting against something that is destined to, to happen. Right. Um, and so we closed a week prior to, um, temporarily closed uh, a week prior to, you know, the, the state regulation. Um, and that was hard to do because people still had appointments. Like we had to go through the whole thing, you know, and it was like, we had, when people, when I say trust the heart or when people say trust the heart, I think sometimes I feel like people think it's a fluffy thing, like love and this fluffy, like word, love is not fluff. When the heart speaks, no, it's not. It, when the heart speaks, it's like, you don't even want to do it yourself, but you know, the heart's speaking and you got to listen to it. And, and everyone else is going right. And you just telling you to go left. That's real hard to do, right? And it's like, if you don't know yourself in the age of information and technology, because we're all chiming into all of this information that we are choosing to like, dislike, and we're creating our own world within the world. So now we can't even see really the world at its you know vastness because we're hitting like and it's populating our world and we get sort of stuck in that. So I had to detach from the media. I had to pause. Um, it was, you know, it was a lot. And I think the care for me is I do a lot of speaking and actually this is one of the, I haven't spoken in a while since we, you know, the pandemic and just all the things, uh, I've been doing a lot of listening and observing and that alone is so powerful. I've, I realized so much about myself, which is helping us recultivate our, our, um, our business, you know, and our mission and are in alignment. And then Trusting the heart is staying close to nature. Nature is telling us to slow down, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, I have to listen to that. The weather's up, down and all around, you know? And it's like, that's intuition. Intuition is directly in alignment with nature. And if you think about how nature flows, there's seasons, there's, you know, different temperatures, different moods each day. And I, I like to look at when I start feeling lost, I like to look into nature and it brings me back. It's like the best mirror. The truest mirror is not the mirror on the wall because that that's like a you're looking into the mirror with a conditioned mind. So you may be seeing yourself uh, through the lens of what someone told you you were. But if you look into nature, that's like, oh, I remember I'm valuable here. I'm a part of this vastness, this this whole totality of this human experience. Um, yeah, so during the COVID-19, it's been, it's been work, self-work this time. And the care in between is like deep listening to myself, allowing myself to be in my emotion without trying to deny it or, you know, or, or um, eradicate it. I'm just like, okay, I'm frustrated today. What do I need? That question asking yourself throughout the day, what do I need right now? Thank you for that. Um, I actually wanted to follow up and read Ernest's question uh, that he put in there. He said, what is the cost of self-care and why do you think it's worth it? Um, he said that it, it sounds like sometimes you all turn down opportunities and do you have to reach a certain level of success before you're able to do that or does self-care start from day one? I don't think that you know um, fully what you need through even through self-care until you kind of take a journey right like you can't i don't think that um self-care is a is a full destination that we reach i think that it's a it's a constant you know flow into filling out you know 
what do you need? Like Jay's was saying, you know, asking yourself questions every day. It's not, it's almost like the skin, right? And skins, people say you're dry, oily, whatever, but then there's also, that's your, your skin type, but what's your skin condition? Paying attention to your life's condition every day is very important. Um, so as far as like, you know, does it start from day one? No, I didn't take care of myself from day one. I didn't know to take care of myself until no one else was taking care of me. So that was, uh, that's a powerful um, realization. It's hard. It's, it's not pretty every day. Um, but also I think that um, you don't necessarily have to be at a certain level of success. I think you have to be at a certain level of um, enlightenment or uh, just intuitiveness within yourself. Once you become connected with self, that's when you start implementing those, those moments in self-care and being able to turn things down. Um, I've, I've always believed that all money is not good money. So that's always been something I've been able to rock with when it comes to saying no. Um, yeah. But knowing when to say no when it came to me was a much harder decision to make. Yeah, I will piggyback on what Maria said um, when it comes to the money. Um, all money is not good money. Some money comes with headaches and other things and people feel like um, because I threw you these couple dollars, then I have full access to you and then I can treat you any type of way. And I'm like, nah, I'm, I, here's your money back and I don't want anything that's attached to it. So thank you, but no thank you. Um, and I will direct them into towards someone else that would be able to help them with what they need. Um, and I am still learning when to fall back and take care of me. That is one thing that I'm learning during this COVID-19 is um, to allow myself to feel. So when mm -hmm. I'm not having a good day, I want to not have a good day. I want to be able to feel and go through all of those emotions, write it down, get through it, get over it just go through it and then when I'm ready to be back to okay business as usual then I'm there but I'm I'm learning to do more of that and you know that first full week um I allowed myself to do it and I felt great after that week was over because I allowed myself to feel and not just kind of push the emotions to the side like uh you know this is just like anything else we'll get over it but I'm like nah like real life hit like all of my events <laughs> were canceled and I'm like so about these bills that's about to just hit my pocket <laughs> where is all of this money that I was counting on coming from um it, it, you know just just the real life things that happened and I'm sure all of us have gone through those emotions and probably still are um going through those emotions but now I'm just I feel like I'm getting more aware of like, okay, you're full. You can't take anything else. It's time to take a break. Did anybody else feel during this time frame that you kind of felt um, almost a download kind of occur? More so, more than just like, okay, I need to chill, but almost like, okay, I need to chill because did anybody else feel like that process kind of happened? Because I feel like that's, I was able to get things done that I couldn't find the oh, time yes. in the day to get done. Yes. Um, and kind of helping navigate some of that and realizing what was blocking me with some of the fears and some of the, you know, uh, just day to day kind of a thing. So I felt like for me, I felt a real download of like all this creativity and all these things and, and the, the way, kind of like the way maker made a way type of a thing through this. Did anybody else kind of feel that same thing? Yes. Yeah, I definitely felt um, a mixture and a blend of things. And like you said, a download. I, and again, it just keeps bringing me back. For me, it was such a shock that I could even go crazy for a second. I was like, okay, I don't even know how anything is going to be possible. I mean, we have a high you know, rent. There's so many factors partnerships and people and i'm thinking not even about myself right you know i'm thinking about how am i going to pay the last payroll like mm -hmm. how is that going to happen 
So this fear was just like, you know, coming up and, you know, we can't avoid, avoid fear, but what I've sort of practiced over the years, because when you have a business, when you're an entrepreneur, fear is just, you gonna have to make fear your best friend and really get to know it. And like, okay, hello, fear. How are you today? Because, you know, it's, it's, it's this idea that, you know, we, we measure ourselves by what we do. And that's been a, co a condition through, you know, elementary school into and through high school, you know, where we're conditioned to measure ourselves by grading, you know, grades and different things like that. But in reality and in real time, um, measuring ourselves, it, we're, we are none of this information, right? I'm, there's something beyond this information that is me. And I really, I think, had to tap into that otherwise I would lose it you know like I had to really get to know myself in a new way because I, I realized that I was I was really starting to create some bad habits you know it gave me permission to really be like all right what is happening you know where are you really and I was on a uh I felt like if if this didn't happen I, I hate that it happened this way for me that it had to be this traumatic for me to get it but um that I would have uh, really burnt myself completely out. Like I realized that I was the source of inspiration for my whole organization. And I was so drained that I was getting numb and that's never good. When you feel numb, that's, that's that, that when you start feeling numb, that's a key sign. Your body has sensations and gives us signs throughout the day. And I know like we try to avoid depression, avoid anxiety. Yes, there's like a fine line between all of it, but we need a little bit of that, right? Because it's giving us our gauges of like, okay, I'm experiencing this anxiety. Oh, I might need to pause with this person right now. Mm -hmm. It's giving us these cues, sort of like a skunk has a smell to push people away. Like we have these sensations in our bodies that we can't even listen to because we're being so inundated with information and technology like we're so much, we can only hold so much in our, our human container. Like, and I think that was the reality that I'm getting from this is like, oh, I can't hold all of this information. So I have to know my own self to be able to find gauges of like when I need to chime in to Instagram and learn more. And I'm not going to click on that because I don't have capacity today. If we don't do that, we are always filled up and we have no room to evolve. And we become numb and desensitized and you know so i was finding myself in that space of like reflection of okay you know using reflection as my greatest tool right now to kind of think back to some things so i can collect the data to re realign with my heart space and i think it's real easy to get drifted from the heart space um and so i think this time for me has has helped me to find my my anchor again One more thing, and to answer your question, um, Ernest, about the money thing, I feel like we don't have to compromise our integrity uh, for commerce ever, right? And I've learned being in business for 10 years, I did that. I did that in many ways where, you know, we were going supernatural and I still have had clients from Bexley, you know, saying, you know, I want these services, I want this, this is how, I, so I would change the rules a little bit to just be like, well, if I do this and, and I start, start, started desensitizing my standard and that was when I was the most stressful in the business. So if I could give anyone any advice is never to compromise yourself because you are the creator of the thing that's rolling, of the mission. You know what I mean? Like, and if you're not in alignment, then everything is going to be off. You're going you're gonna to start attracting people that cause more harm to your mission than good. And that's what I was starting to attract. And I didn't know why. I think, you know, uh, Maria, you said something about um, one of the words being accountability. You know, um, we created part of our hospitality curriculum when you onboard at Replenish is uh, accountable care. And like leaning into like being accountable for you at any given point, because as we know with this pandemic, we, we can't control any of this, but what we can, what we can lean into is ourselves so that if, you know, we can find at least the answers that we need to move forward day by day by looking inward now, because that's all we have. We don't know when the pandemic's going to be over. So this is a great opportunity to get creative because our worlds are all so different and so beautiful and so brilliant. You know, no one in the world has your fingerprint. And I always say that to the 
kids that we teach yoga to. It's like, but really look at, really think about that. No one in the world has your fingerprint. That's how special we are. Thank you. Um, I had one last question that I wanted to ask all of you. It seems that you're definitely in the lane of your heart's work based on your heart, based on the fact that you were the ones that we were um, excited to bring in for this conversation. And what's the dynamic of doing something that you love for how you um, earn income? Like, because you hear like, oh, I love to sing, I love to do this, so I don't want to dare attach a dollar amount to it because it might take away my love. But all of you are in a lane of something that you love, and you also um, eat off of it from what we can see. So what's that transition been like, and what would you tell other uh, creatives and artists out there that um, are people who just are connected to their hard work? So... I um, started off with what I loved as a hobby. I was a makeup artist for play. I didn't know that I could make money doing it. Um, that journey in and of itself, like finding out that what I love to do could actually make me money um, was almost like an aha moment. Uh, but there were times where I did it out of my home. And those were the times that I, I wasn't so in love because you can't, um, it, you can never get away from it, right? It's like you sleep where you eat and you eat where you sleep. It's, there's no um, break between the two. But what I've rooted myself in is the fact that both my passion and my paycheck are also my purpose. And that's kind of what helps drive that. And, and it makes it so that um, I, I really focus on how I can fulfill and be fulfilled at the end of every day. And that's what, you know, if, if I didn't have my why and I didn't have my purpose in my passion, um, that paycheck would have never come ever at any, at any point anyway, so. Yeah, for me, my, um, my self-care was di directly or has been, my self-care has been directly correlated with my financial picture, which is interesting because we, first of all, being first time generation entrepreneurs, it's been real interesting and not a lot of funding. You know, we made a lot of mistakes and we, you know, I'll talk about that on another time. But for me, everything is a currency, an exchange of energy, whether we see it or not. It's, it can be an invisible thing, but when you have self-awareness, you start realizing that everything, you know, is an energy and money is an energy, an exchange of energy is what it is and so if you're giving all of these things and that's part of our mission is like we come from a lineage of women who have given so much that they had nothing left in return so we were directly like contradicting what we were standing for because we were giving everything paying people we just wanted to give love and to you know do all the things we can do to uplift and empower community meanwhile we're suffering. We got tax issues. All of this, we're not, we're not being responsible for the choices we had to have this business, not knowing that we was like, but we love people. We want them to have paychecks, but then we were suffering, you know, I'm about to lose my house. Like there's so many things that, that um, happen when we are not in alignment with our heart. And when we are not caring for ourselves first and foremost, we've all heard, put your mask on for your, you know, your oxygen mask on the airplane first. And it's like, but let's really think about that. It is so true. Like, if we can't care for ourselves, then it becomes a conscious. Like, you know, you have to toggle between both, right? Like this idea that I'm going to give myself care um, and also um, have a fee that, you know, you set a value for what you do. And there's a fee associated. Within that, though, you can have now that, you know, there's social enterprises popping up the you know the the people who can afford that is great and then you can put a part of your business like at the yoga cares you have donation based yoga so then that felt fulfill my heart because i'm like everyone can't afford a 95 dollar facial for an hour like period so i don't feel i don't feel okay with just having that option and having nothing for anyone else so we developed you know part of our you know strategy was to have 100 donation based classes a month um so 
I think it's making sure, cause I didn't, I, I couldn't separate myself from that. I'm like, I, I know that we have to make money. I'm okay with that part, but I'm not okay with not offering something else for those who don't, because being black in America, we all know that we don't, you know, we, everyone doesn't have the same resources, you know, everyone, but I wanted, I wanted everyone to at least have access. And I'm saying, I, I should say, we, we wanted everyone to have access to growing their own self-awareness and we thought yoga would be a great opportunity that's just one form there's many other forms and meditation would be a great opportunity to have a donation-based sector to our space so that we can still as a community come together to see our own beauty even without the facials and massages and all these these other things to restore community so i think looking at money and value like it's energy and um, an exchange of energy and you're worthy of that um, also didn't feel worthy. So that played into it. And as soon as I started shifting my own inner world, the financial picture started shifting. Didn't know if anyone else wanted to um, answer that question. We are getting, we're wrapping up. And so typically when we wrap up, um, there's three different areas that you can hit on. We just want to hear a last word from our, our panelists. I know Lauren had a question, but in between me switching between um, interfaces, I lost it. Lauren, did you want to ask your question? I did. Hold on. I got to find it in the chat, too. <laughs> um, this was for, is it Durant? Is that how you say your name? Duart. Duart. Um, how was your journey to self-love and when did you notice that you were on that journey? Um, that's kind of a loaded question, but um, for me, I was always on it. But at one point, um, I thought I could heal everybody and fix the whole world. And I find myself taking on way too much. And um, I was talking to my son today, I have a 30-something-year-old son and daughter. And uh, it, there was times when I was so busy that I would fall asleep at the wheel. And uh, I was in an accident back in 97 and so like um from that accident it was kind of like what, what this pandemic did it gave you a chance to um like the lady said did you get a download of course you get it every time you stop you get a download or if you don't get it you're not listening and um it was to um really make sure i took care of myself like by being quiet or listening to what i was really wanting to do and not being pressured to do what people think i should do and I even feel like in religious communities, we have to make sure we show up in a certain way. Um, in, in any community, we have to do that if we want to fit in. But there's some satisfaction with know what you're really here for and trusting your own self and doing what you know is right versus what, and for yourself, doing it for yourself versus doing it for someone else. And I, I want to make it that clear. I think that really when you know how to do what you want to do for you, you're going to take care of yourself. But if you do what you're doing to, to gain well for someone out from someone else or to get them to like you or to manipulate, it's going to keep you unsettled or it's going to keep me unsettled. I'll make it personal. And the question you gave me is very good because um, I'm constantly looking at, am I doing this for myself or I'm doing this for what they think or am I doing it out of fear? So if I limit, if I ask my, if I do myself that test, I kind of have to, um, it, it, I'm faced with the truth and telling myself the truth is the best self-care I can do. You, you, does that make sense? <laughs> it does, yes. And I was, I was kind of going through that little journey a while back, um, when, before the pandemic. I was going through something like that and I was like, am I doing this for validation or am I doing this because I want to? It was like uh -huh. a back and forth battle. So I That's, awesome. Thank you. That's powerful. I like that. Thank you. <laughs> So we usually end with a key takeaway um, or we have a resource library. So if there's a book that you've read that helped in your journey towards self-love or radical self-love, if you want to offer that today, that would be greatly appreciated. So key takeaway or resource. Um, key takeaway for me is um, self-love is definitely required to do what it is that you're supposed to do and 
I need to do more of it for me. Um, yeah, my self-love, I need me days. Like those literally, I had to incorporate those. So this was, this to me today feels like um, Jill Scott and Erica Badu. <laughs> <laughs> Like I needed this again today. So I thank you. So my takeaway um, with this, thank you. Thank you all so much um, to be in community with you all in this conversation um, is definitely what I needed today. Um, so my takeaway is use your whole life as a tool for success. Your so-called failures, your joys, your anger, all of it, use it as a tool. You know, it, light, light is, I like to say it's a, like a life study. Be like a scientist of your own life. Look at it, examine it. What do scientists do? You know, they're not just looking for a, a definite answer. They're looking for the exploration of, of something. And so research your thoughts, observe your emotions, um, and pray and be still. I love that, like that stillness of just sitting. And even if you have nothing going on, just sit and just notice and stay connected to your breath. The book um, is Eckhart Tolle, A New Earth, Awakening to Your Life Purpose. This was one of the first books I read and it took me on a, it, it, was, it was a rabbit hole of, of connecting me back to myself. So this one is a good one. My key takeaway from today is um, being honest. I think that everyone here was uh, unafraid to be vulnerable and to discuss, you know, some of things that they might have been struggling with, you know, just kind of recognizing that connection that we all have in that way and that understanding that none of this is um, something that even though we are you know alone in the moment <laughs> in our spaces we're not alone in emotion we're not alone in um both having a capacity and knowing how to utilize it we're not alone in um you know trying to figure all this out none of us have all of the answers and um i i find very i find a great amount of peace in knowing that we're kind of all in this winging it, hoping for the best, but also doing it, uh, you know, with intention and with compassion and hopefully with accountability. Duarte, you want to finish this? My mind would just simply be, um, this time is a chance to uh, forgive. Um, just forgive. Just continue to forgive and forgive. And, um, and when uh, when it gets overwhelming, go to bed and wake up and start fresh. Like that would be my takeaway because um, that's it. <laughs> it's a new day every day. And so take that, you know, like um, sometimes when you go to sleep, that's a place when you're stiller because it's hard for us to be still. But if you go to sleep, there's permission for dreams to come and for answers to come. And for when you wake up, you'll just wake up knowing. And even if I declare it, it'll remind your senses that you have that capacity to always wake up with an answer. And you know what, answers come from rest, not from striving. Bar. <laughs> answers come from rest, not from striving. Man, my notes, I don't know about y'all, but my whole little paper, I'm not very like structured when I hear stuff, so I'm here, there, and everywhere, but I appreciate all the bars that have been shared today. Um, I want to say thank you. I want to say a shout out to Tanisha and Anisha. I know that they're in here for the first time with us today. And so I'm uh, really grateful for you all to be here. Congratulations on being accepted to Kentucky State University. Um, so that's exciting. Congratulations. Um, so this is being recorded. This will be available for all of our end coaches, all of our youth, and even our panelists, if you know this conversation would add value or help someone else, um, we'll make sure to share that with you um, after okay. today so um, that you can share that out. Thank you, and we will be in touch. And actually, I'm gonna ask everyone, 
embracing all spirituality, all religions or practices, not religion, not spirituality, however you identify. What we are going to come together for in this space is to say thank you and send gratitude to Adam H because they're going to give us this, these funds that we apply for back in March. Um, and we're going to have a part two, right, everybody? Wow. Don't you agree? Yes. Yeah. So those self-care kits are going to have our yoga materials for a mindfulness yoga meditation that we're going to be taking through uh, on part two with Replenish. They're going to have beautiful coloring books like this one. <laughs> um, and the one from Duarte. Um, they're also going to have skin care uh, from True Glam and Glow. And so everybody come, came together and said, thank you, Adam H. Um, and thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you, Adam H. <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you, Adam thank H. Because we're thank grateful you, for H. that. And we actually will keep this on the video and send this to them. Uh, <laughs> but I'm believing that our, our uh our awarded letter uh, for this grant is going to be in my inbox as soon as we get off of here. So again, <laughs> thank you to everybody. Uh, this conversation was necessary to set the stage. We are excited for part two, which will not be next Wednesday, but the Wednesday after, um, where everybody here will be invited. And then some of our, our friends and uh, neighbors who could use some um, radical self-love. So um, with that, I think what I heard is to be still, be honest, be accountable, and to love self first in order to be in a space to actually um, not be overfilled, but give us room to evolve. Um, so thank you for all of that and grateful to share the space with you today. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Nice to talk to you all. Yeah, nice to yes. Talk. Oh, my goodness. Bye. Bye-bye.